Thanks for coming in. Thanks for, thanks for having me. I gave Wayne a hard time Friday. I, want, I was hoping he was coming with you so I could apologize to him. I would give him a hard time every day. Oh, really? Yeah. Because he was giving us a hard time, but I think he was just doing his job. Well, how was he giving you a hard time? Well, we were just having a hard time getting you on the show. No. And then, like, Friday, we wanted to do a two-minute phoner with you. It wasn't you. even two minutes. It would have. Quick it, question. But it would have been two minutes. Mm -hmm. But it would have taken two minutes of your time. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, we just wanted to get your reaction to the governor announcing DMV and Danbury being closed, which to me seemed a little political, seeing how you were running on the lieutenant as lieutenant governor. And it's a major metropolitan area. You don't shut down the DMV there. Yeah. I just wanted to get a quick response from you, and he said you were unavailable. And I was like, it's, wow. six, it's 645. Mm. How can the man be unavailable right now? I had a 630 tea time. Did you? Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> You're covering for your person. Here, here, here's the problem, though. His response just now, the mayor's response, was quicker than his press guy's. Yeah, his press All guy right. was like, man. Uh, uh, Wayne's a good guy. He does a good job for you. But you, you got to tell I, I, Wayne. That Wayne doesn't even would... get paid. Really? No. He's he, he, my boy. He's college my credit and leftovers half-eaten <laughs> sandwiches from the mayor. <laughs> To all he's well, getting. then he's doing a fantastic. I let him or... flow in my my orbit. Of but people. I know he has to weed all these uh, crazy requests and stuff out. But just tell him when we call. I know, I'm sorry. Should we call your cell phone directly? Call me think, directly. Just leave we'll... it. Just drop a message. Have your producer. I, I think we'll do that. But if I'm playing golf, I'm not calling. But tell Wayne. I... <laughs> <laughs> Apologize to Wayne for me. He's a good guy. A good is. man. So, uh, what is your reaction to DMV being closed in Danbury? Yeah, pigs will fly across a harvest moon before that'll happen. Yeah. That's not happening. Why would he put your city on the list? Well, I hate to think it's be political, but look, I mean, you know, this is all just part of a gambit to try to get the uh, unions back to the table. They're meeting today, and they'll be able to um, make a determination a little bit later on about how they're going to move forward. So this is all just part of the chess game, you know, of trying to get this uh, you know, alleged concession pack package passed. Well, being on the sidelines now, uh, what is your opinion of how Governor Malloy is handling the budget crisis in Connecticut? Well, it's not the policy decisions that I would make, and certainly Connecticut would look a lot different if uh, uh, we had gotten elected. But, I mean, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, the biggest problem that I think the governor has is that he, he lets the tail wag the dog. I mean, we have 55,000 state employees that are trying to run the state of Connecticut. And the fact of the matter is is that there's only one governor. The governor has to lead, and, and you lead by – not uh, being partners with your employees, but by managing your employees. And so I think there's been a, a real failure in management, and certainly a, a failure in terms of being able to prioritize cutting spending first, uh, looking to consolidate departments second, and then you talk about uh, givebacks, concessions, and layoffs and things like that. Yeah. Were you surprised that the budget didn't have any real spending cuts in it? None. I, was I surprised? No, I didn't surprise because he's, look, he sold his soul to become governor, right? So, um, you know, he's got to satisfy all these special interest groups, all these constituencies out there. And the people that lose are the taxpayers. I mean, we're the ones that take it on the chin. If you're making between forty dollars and $80,000, you're going to feel it next two weeks from now when you get your first check after August 1st. Uh, How much is that going to go up? Well, you're going to be doubled whatever your withholding is because the uh, state income tax – uh, increases are retroactive back to January 1. <laughs> so you're going to get whacked. I mean, to the average family, it's about 800 bucks. I mean, that's a lot of money. That's just one check, though, right? Then, it, then it'll no, be okay. No, you got to you got to double up all the way till till December thirty first. All the way, every check. Yeah, J July first to December thirty first is going to cover January first to June thirty. Right. Right. I mean, it's it's painful. Wow. Not to mention the sales tax went up. Which I remember. I'm old enough to remember. <laughs> that was supposed to be temporary. Back, back, back when I was younger, Sonny, we didn't pay sales tax. Yeah, I remember we didn't have a sales tax. <laughs> no, we yeah, didn't. but, the, but they, the whole thing was it's going to be temporary just to get us out of this crisis. Yeah. Well, we yeah. all learned that one. Texas are never temporary. I, saw the, no. I saw the funniest <laughs> sign in Westport yesterday at the Arts Festival. A yoga store was saying, yoga is not taxing, so why tax yoga? That's cute. Yeah, yeah that's very cute. clever. Sure. So uh, you and Foley, that you uh, you weren't going to raise taxes. You were going to do this all through cutting. Well, you know, it, Tom Foley had a plan, and um, again, you know, now that you know uh, the election's over, um, there were some parts of it that um, I thought were more doable than other parts. But yeah, I mean, the the number. I think it's really about priority and what you prioritize, right? Our priority was to really fundamental restructure government, cut. Uh, you know, cut departments down, consolidate departments, 
reduce the size and scope and, and the footprint of government. And then you start looking at revenue, whether or not you're going to need more revenue. But I think what's infuriating for the residents is uh, the first thing the governor did was push through uh, the highest tax increase in the history of the state. Once he got that done, then he started thinking, well, maybe we ought to try to you know, save some money here and there, but not really. Let's just kind of make a wink and a nod and, and everybody gets a four year deal of no layoffs and uh, folks uh, get the same kind of level of benefits that they've always had. And, and I think that's infuriating for our folks out there that are suffering. Not infuri- infuriating enough, right? It doesn't it's seem, funny. It's like we're pissed yeah. and we'll, we'll complain about it. Yeah. Uh, but we don't show up at the polls to vote. No, they don't. And, and really, uh, it's been somewhat muted. I think part of it is because people haven't seen it come out of their paycheck, which they will next month. Right. And I think the second piece to that is that people are beyond even being angry. They're just disgusted. I mean, I hear and I'm sure you hear from your friends a lot is, you know, what? I'm just moving. You know, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm yeah. punching out. I mean, I hear that more now than I've ever. Heard I can't before. do that. But weren't we disgusted <laughs> last <can> year? <laughs> <laughs> weren't we disgusted last year before the vote? I mean, I, I feel like we've been. Like stuck in this quicksand for a good couple of years at this point. Mayor Bouton is here from uh, Danbury. Yeah, I think we were. I think, yeah. I think oh. we are stuck. I, I mean, all right. Tell me if this is crazy. But if you don't pay any taxes, should you have the right to vote? Shouldn't shouldn't this shouldn't government be like a corporation? Like you you're either pay, you're like you're either part of it or you're not. And if you're not paying in, you shouldn't have a vote. Because guess who? You know the people who aren't paying any taxes is going to vote for. Well, I'll tell you what's crazy. If you're not paying any taxes, we're going to write you a check for $1,200 at the end of the year. That's really crazy, just for breathing, because that's the earned income tax credit that the governor put in. So not only are we raising taxes on you, we're going to take your money, we're going to give it to people who aren't paying taxes now already. Why would you do that? Just because, Hmm. you know, he wants to feel good about that. There's 100,000 families that are going to get checks for over $1,200. Holy crap. And they don't pay taxes to begin with. And I don't think they should because they don't make enough money to pay taxes. But do we have to give them a check on top of it? Right. <laughs> Especially well, when the rest of us are hurting? I yeah. don't pay taxes, and I voted six times last year. <laughs> 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 it sounds like Danbury. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how are things in Danbury? Good? We're great. I mean, yeah. we are uh, uh, the Your center budget's of Western together. Canada. We're done. Our budget's done. It's balanced, uh, and uh, all good no things are happening. No big tax increases? Uh, you know, we had a gentle increase in our property taxes, but it wasn't uh, catastrophic. It, you know, it, it, I love to be able to not ever raise taxes. Nobody ever wants to, but you have to have to balance that about being, you know, you got to be able to put out the fire. You got to be able to catch the bad Are guys. Are you making your like government that. smaller there in Danbury? Absolutely. We have less employees now than we did when I started in 2001. But How I got, many less? Like one? Well, we, a decent amount, but we've got about 10,000 yeah. 10, more residents. Did you lay them off? Oh, wow. So we've grown dramatically um now through attrition consolidation of departments okay. and uh you know we didn't have layoffs nice yeah. so this ives concert deal dude this is my place man i gotta tell you <laughs> i'm really impressed with yeah. that and uh nice job there i bought my little my little thingy yeah we yeah. got we got to go through I would, that i mean you got some great bands coming it's a great place to go and we got to talk mm-hmm. about I that saw you, you just there. see him light up just talking oh, yeah. about it yeah, I went to see Earth, Wind, and Fire. I was really No, you were it making was... the monster move. I saw you. I don't know who that chick was, but it was it was pretty powerful. Yeah, thank you, man. I had a break right in there. <laughs> 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 <laughs>